All right, so today I'm trying to fix a TPMS light on fault, my 2014 Ram Promaster. These are pretty good vans. Uh, they do sometimes have some electrical gremlins that creep up, and this is one of them. So if you have a TPMS light on that you can't figure out what the problem is, maybe this will help you. Okay, so started, I was driving, TPMS light came on, it said check TPMS system or indicating there's a fault. That does not mean that you have a low tire. If your tire was low, it would come on and say, you know, low tire pressure. Uh, this is a system fault and I'm going to show you how I went about figuring it out. To really troubleshoot TPMS on a van like this, you do need some sort of scan tool. For about $50, you can buy software, and for about another, you know, $20, the hardware needed. So for under $75, you can have a uh, Chrysler Dodge Ram specific scan tool that works pretty well using the Alpha OBD2 software. So that's what I did. Just loaded on a Windows computer and connected it up. Okay, so alternatively to downloading software for Windows and buying the adapter, which ultimately is more value for the money. Maybe you know someone who has a TPMS tool, or maybe you have multiple vehicles that has TPMS and you think it's worth it. For under $200 now, you can buy one of these TPMS specific tools. This one is made by Autofix. Um, I got it on sale on Amazon, but you can get an out autel scan tool which is who this is made by again they're under 200 dollars and it does have the cord that will plug into the obd2 port so you can diagnose system faults with this tool as well all right so i have one of a few things that could be wrong with the vehicle so there's either interference from some kind of electronic device in the vehicle and the tire pressure sensors on the ProMaster you use 433 megahertz. There could be interference from something that is a popular frequency in the United States. The second thing it could be is it could be a bad TPMS module. So the module itself could be bad, going bad, even though it appears to work. Um, this is kind of highly unlikely, but that could be the problem. And the third thing it could be is it could be a bad sensor. So usually when you have a fault, it is a bad sensor that causes the problem. Like I said, I was getting readings from all of the sensors. While using Alpha OBD to look at the TPMS system, there were a couple of codes stored in the computer. They were C1012, and this is specific to the uh, TPMS system, and C1014. And what these mean is left right side tire pressure sensor location undetermined so in layman's terms what does that mean so under the van it's under the van under the floor here where the firewall comes down there is a little black box and that is the tpms module and it has a built-in receiver antenna and what it does is as you drive down the road it monitors the transmissions from the tires on the van and using basically triangulation and you know the strength of the signal it determines which tire has which sensor even though that's kind of unnecessary because on this you know van it's not going to tell you what tire is low so it's kind of an overcomplicated universal system made by schrader that ram put on this van that's going to make our life a little more dis difficult uh, these days. So my initial reaction is that if my sensors are good, that the module is bad. But on a last whim, I went and started looking for TSBs or technical service bulletins for the ProMaster. And I did come across one. And it's number 08-8. 090-17. Basically it says 
This model applies to all 2014 through 2017 Ram ProMasters. And it says it applies to vehicles within the following markets, which is NAFTA, which would be North America. So Canada, Mexico, United States. And it applies to vehicles built on or before July 3rd, 2017. Symptom. There, the customer may describe a TPM warning light on due to missing information or localization failure. So obviously, the customer is not going to know that unless they have a scan tool. But long story short, if you have these codes, the first thing that Ram says to do is to replace this little jumper harness that connects the module to the wiring harness on the vehicle. It gives us a part number to use. And it's funny, when you look up this part number, it does not say it's for a ProMaster, which is kind of interesting. Basically, it's a pretty easy procedure though. We're going to um, get access to the back of the jumper harness here. We're gonna disconnect the battery all right here in this area. We're gonna pop the old harness off push it down through the body of the car. There's this little grommet here that seals it. This is the new harness, by the way. So I bought it new. I found it on eBay, brand new, for cheaper than you could buy it at, like, you know, an online parts store, but um, they only had like three or four of them left. So I'll leave a description, but I can't guarantee how long those will be there. But you can still get this from the dealer or from an online parts store where I recommend you buy it to get the best price. So basically, we're just going to take all this off. Um, the hardest part is getting under the vehicle. I'm going to use some ramps, drive up on them, give myself a little bit of room to work. Because we just need to unclip this little connector from the module. And then we're going to reconnect the new connector to the module. And I'll push this up through the floor and then we'll work backwards. So basically, I'm going to disconnect it from up here, have it ready to push through the floor, get underneath do everything underneath and then come back up here. All right, I've got it up on the ramps. I'm going to remove the cover here on the floor. To disconnect the battery, it's real easy. There's just this little thumb switch. Just flip that and then Pull the negative terminal off, like that. All right, so now to get access, it's behind here where this harness is. So we're gonna have to remove the cup holder, this whole assembly here, and there's this little shield down here that we're gonna remove. Okay, so this just pulls out, and that reveals these T20 torques. So I'm just gonna remove them. And then there are two more up here and right here. There may be little plastic covers over them. All right, now if we just give it a quick yank, that comes off. All right, so now we're gonna switch to a Phillips head to take, there's a screw on each side of this. Kind of move this out of the way. All right, so hopefully you can see this is where the grommet goes to the floor where my finger is pointing. Um, there's just a, a clip to remove to get this kind of bent out of the way. And here's the connector right here where that harness is connected on. So you just pull this little tab up and release the connector from above here, like that. I'm just gonna kinda force this grommet through the floor. That'd be a good time to clean up all the crap all over the place in here. See, that grommet went through pretty easy. So I'm not sure if this harness just gets damaged from the pressure being right by the accelerator pedal or what their exact reasoning is for saying that this is what needs replaced because it looks like to me the pinouts the same and everything so 
Let's go underneath now and I'll show you how to get the rest of it out. All right, so I'm directly beneath the, this is the battery box here. So I'm behind the suspension here. And if you look up in here, that little black box I'm pointing to, that's the TPS, TPMS module. You can see the connector there where it hooks on. This isn't quite the easiest place to reach it though, unless you have really small hands. I mean, I can reach up in there. Just be careful if the van was running this, it's gonna be kind of hot in here. Um, you can additionally, you can kind of come around and get at it from the side here. Yeah, if you reach your arm through. And right, hopefully you can see um, where the harness goes in the floor. It's just right above that TPMS module to the left. I'm just gonna reach up in here and unplug this. All right, so that's off. So there is a little tab. I'll show you what it looks like. This little plastic piece right here it's just pushed on to like a bolt that you need to just push that off of there. Got that. Just gonna pull it down through the hole. So I'm just gonna get it started up into the van there. Best I can. I'll be able to pull it up from inside. Make sure that's engaged. May or may not hear a little click, but just tug on it, make sure it doesn't come out. All right, pull the grommet up in place. Okay. You gotta make sure the wire is facing towards the passenger side as it comes out of the hole, which it is here. Then we're just gonna plug then okay. tuck this back behind here it's out of the way all right and then we're going to go ahead and reinstall everything and reconnect the negative terminal on the battery. All right, so now that we have all that back together, the next step is to go in and check the system and clear the codes. You do, unfortunately, have to clear it. It won't really clear itself. Um, so, again, if you have the program that I do, it's this Alpha OBD, I'll show you more in a minute. But here's the hardware that you need. So, um, there are many options as far as Bluetooth, Elm adapters, out there. I will say that this vehicle is very picky on which one you use and this is a known working one. This is a USB adapter and I always recommend using a USB with a Windows program versus Bluetooth with the um, cell phone app version because uh, I have had in the middle of doing programming before I've had the Bluetooth glitch and it brick a PCM that cost me $800. So cable connection is always better in my opinion. You'll also need uh, this yellow adapter here. So I'll have links to uh, all this hardware in the description. It's relatively inexpensive. Like I said, we're talking 20, 30 bucks for everything here. And this is known working. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and plug this into the USB port. And obviously the, the driver is already installed and everything for Windows. And then we'll plug this part into the OBD port. And the yellow adapter is to connect to um, a different CAN bus speed on these Fiat based vehicles. So we'll open up the program. And before you connect, you want to turn the key forward not to start it just on okay so get you in here where you can see this all right so we're going to go to start here we're going to click kind of already defaulted out for me 
Dodge Ram. We want Promaster. In our case, here VF function. We want our tire control. And then we're going to click tire pressure control Schrader. Use yellow adapter. Kind of walk you through it. And we're going to click connect. Hit OK. All right. So we're connected. If we go over here to status slash faults, you can hit read all faults. And I've got no faults. But you would hit the clear faults button. It says check engine is off and key is in MAR, which is the on run position. Okay. All right. Now, if we hit read system status, it will show you a whole bunch of information. The key is it's showing you left, right, uh, rear and front, tire pressure sensors and millibars. Um, so basically that's telling me it's reading the sensors. So we do have where it says side to side detection failure set. That's because of the previous fault, which is not presently there right now. So how you will test this, uh, we know the harness is connected because obviously we're connected to the module. You wanna take the vehicle for a drive and you need to be going over, I'll say 25 miles an hour, 30 miles an hour. Just if you can go out to a country road that there's no stops for about, you know, 15 miles, 10 to 15 miles, that's usually enough. Um, let the vehicle try to relearn all of its status information. And if that still doesn't fix it, and you know you're getting tire readings from all the tires, then the module's probably bad itself, unfortunately. But this is how to do the technical service bulletin to fix the tire pressure light on the 2014 to 17 Ram Promaster. Okay, so I performed the TSB, and guess what? It didn't do anything. So I wasted $35 on that harness for no reason, which is kind of disappointing because that's what, you know, Dodge Chrysler said the problem was. So now I'm left scratching my head. When you hook the scan tool up and you look at Alpha OBD, it tells you if the, the module is reporting interference as the problem. I did not have that. So I was literally just stuck with these couple codes and no other information at all to help me out. So I decided I would start I'm um, looking at the sensors again uh, with this tool. Like I said, I, I can come up and I can activate it just by, you can see it'll tell me, you know, the ID number, the pressure, and the temperature, and the voltage, which tells me if the battery is okay or not in the sensor. So I went around the van multiple times, scanning all the sensors, looking for an issue. And the only thing that came up that was repeating itself is every time I came around here to the driver's side wheel and scanned the sensor, it took about twice as long to scan as the other three, or the other four, if you count the full-size spare under the vehicle. So I literally, that's the only clue I had, is that it took a little bit longer to scan, but it was still working. Um, I, I was able to deflate the tire, have the TPMS light come on on the dash, it reported the low tire. When I had to go out for a drive though, it just, it kept reporting these trouble codes and it wouldn't say what the problem was, it just said that it was unable to determine, you know, which one was where. So on a whim, I went ahead and replaced the sensor in this tire since it was showing or it was taking about twice as long to scan. And sure enough, that was the problem. As soon as I mounted it to the vehicle, cleared the trouble codes, took it for a drive, the light has stayed off. I've taken it for multiple long drives now. That was the issue. While inspecting the sensor, I did notice there was a slight crack in the side of the case um, inside or on the sensor inside the wheel. It could have happened 
you know, when a tire was being installed. I did recently get these tires not too long ago, but they have been working fine. So the only thing I could think of was that sensor was intermittently not transmitting. So it would transmit, you know, like I said with this, but it wasn't reporting fast enough. It wasn't keeping up with the other sensors and that was throwing off the module. Not very good logic in the module. You know, I, this is one of those situations where I think that a dealer, you know, unless they've had experience with this before, it might fool them as well. You know, unfortunately I loaded up the parts cannon and I got it right on the first try as far as the sensor and which one it was. And the only reason is because I had this tool right here. So we'll say the ProMasters are known for having a lot of problems with TPMS. It's little stuff like this. So that's why I made this video because I hope it's a clue as to the inner workings of the system that's on this vehicle. And maybe if you're like me and it really bothers you to have that light on in there and you know you'll do everything you can to get it fixed this maybe will help you get it fixed some people just put black tape over the light I'm not saying i endorse that but i see why this was kind of a tricky one but i got it figured out i wanted to share it with you if video was helpful be sure to like it please subscribe to the channel it does help if you have any questions or comments leave them below i'll have links in the description to all the parts i used in the video again to where you can download the software for Alpha OBD, it has a lot of other cool uses. The main thing that, that I really liked about it was I turned off the seatbelt warning chimes. And if you have one of these, you know how annoying those are. All right. Thanks for watching. Until next time, we'll see you later.